Um, yeah, hello, first of all, Raphael. Um, great to talk to you and have you here. So uh, today we are talking about uh, GDPR, which is for a lot of people not the most favorite um, topic um, first, but uh, it will be, especially when you are a founder uh, starting your own company and uh, you need, or a seller as well, and you need to do a deal with GDPR rules. So that's why we have um, Raphael here. Um, I'm, I'm David, um, I'm the, the CEO of LeadChat, and LeadChat um, is a tool that connects your LinkedIn um, with your CRM, and uh, you can easily push new contacts from a LinkedIn profile to your CRM and have contact updates and synchronize your messages. And um, Raphael is our DPO, so our data protection officer, um, Raphael has uh, more than, I think, eight years experience in that field. Um, he worked for the European Commission um, on other big corporates. And um, now he started his own company since uh, the beginning of the year. So since that time, he's also with DPO. That's the name of his company, um, our um, data protection officer. And for us, it's pretty cool because it's a subscription um, which we are used to as we are a SaaS company. So um, you can subscribe to DPO and um, you will have um, all the services having a, a DPO on your side and can ask all the questions what we did, uh, especially at the beginning uh, where we had a lot of questions and uh, especially when we are in need for documents, um, also in our sales process, uh, when we deal um, with, with companies and they ask us about uh, GDPR, then we have, uh, thanks to DPO, everything ready and um, yeah, pixel perfect, uh, how we say in tech language. So thanks for having you, uh, Raphael. Thanks for having you here and participating. And thank you very much, David. It's really nice. And thank you for introducing. It's really, it's really, it's really, uh, it's really, it's really uh, thanks full. And, uh, and uh, I'm really pleased to, to, to do this event with you, uh, with uh, Villejet, uh, of course. Uh, I'm following you since uh, one year, as you, say, as you said, and uh, I'm really pleased to to be your DPO and uh, and um, and to to see uh, you uh, growing uh, uh, month after month. It's really it's really great. Um, so yeah, the, the topic uh, of today is uh, uh, to explain exactly what uh, you don't have you you the, the the mistakes you you need to not to do um, when you begin a company because of course. As a DPO, I've seen many, many, many mistakes, and uh, there are some mistakes where the same uh, on, um, done by uh, by uh, by startups. So, yeah. mistake one. I've and seen, uh, um, at yes, the end, course. also, yeah. also before before you start, oh. maybe Raphael, no. what is important um, when you stay on the line at the end, we have also. A, a big GDPR playbook uh, you will get. Um, yes. So there you will find all the different mm -hmm. common mistakes in a written form. So today we are just talking about eight mistakes. Um, there were eight critical mistakes um, for us also. So um, if you don't want to go to jail, which is the headline of mm -hmm. our uh, today's webinar, you should really follow these steps and uh, learn something. So stay on the line uh, to get the ebook at the end. And I'm very happy um, to go through the first mistake with you, Raphael. Thanks, David. So the first mistake I've seen a lot uh, on uh, with uh, with startups and a lot in startups uh, uh, located in uh, in Station F is to use a label GDPR label. You will uh, uh, you publish in your website a, a beautiful uh, GDPR compliant label, but you are not compliant. And of course, this is a main a main issue because if you are not compliant, you cannot say that you are compliant because you are providing false information to everyone and to be compliant you need to comply with many things so you have to inform people with your privacy policy you have you need to secure your tool your your, your device your uh, information system you have to do privacy by design you have to to do many things of course you can have a data profession officer like uh, like us, of course, but it's not always an obligation. But you need to do some actions to be compliant, and it's quite easy to check if you are not a compliant, uh, if you are not compliant or not. It, it, it's um, you just need to go in your website and to check the privacy policy, to check if you have a data protection agreement, if you are a, a data processor, and so on. And in few seconds, you can see if you are not. Uh, if you are or not compliant. And of course, uh, so 
if you are providing a label and you are not compliant, uh, this is really, really dangerous for you. Um, so um, for instance, uh, Lidget, so what did you do uh, to, to, to be, uh, are you ready to, to be a GDPR compliant, for instance? Yes, um, so here we have two components, it's product and design. First of all, when we started um, to really um, create our product, as we are um, dealing with very um, sensitive information between um, the two big platforms, LinkedIn and the CRM, um, we thought about, okay, first, are we a data processor or a data controller? So what does that mean? Processing information is that we send information from A to B, like in a, in a, in a tunnel or funnel, and we're not storing the information. So we have no view on your information in the CRM or any of that. Um, the controller of that information is you, so it's either controlled on the LinkedIn interface or it's controlled on the CRM. So um, that was for us very important at the beginning to be a data processor as a company. And um, then also what is very important in our product, because as we are integrating to the, to the LinkedIn API, um, it's for us um, very, very important to stick with LinkedIn guidelines and rules meaning that we as a tool don't do any automation on LinkedIn. We don't click ourselves like a robot with the tool through different pages and, and extract information um, that wouldn't be a GDPR uh, friendly and that also wouldn't stick with the LinkedIn uh, rules. So um, these two things uh, were kind of the, the most important steps for us to take. Next to that as a company, of course, since we also have you, Raphael, uh, we have a lot of documentation for that, um, and that's also important to have really, um, as a company, um, a good reputation. So have all these documents ready, um, have a and a here about, and at a later stage also, but for an early startup, um, also not easy to get the necessary um, security um, certificates, which can be ISO certificate, SOC2 certificate. But these are costly, around about 20 or uh, even more thousands. So um, we are getting this next year, I guess. But at the beginning, um, yeah, if you're not um, funded with a million as a bootstrap business, it's it's hard to, to get one of these certifications. But um, we are GDPR friendly and uh, ready for that. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So the so next thing to is thinking that GDPR doesn't apply to startups. Of course, a lot of startups are saying that, no, no, I'm too small. I just begin my activity, my business. Uh, I'm not uh, processing many, many data. So, um, so uh, don't be worried. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not um, covered by the GDPR, which is of course not the case. Um, the startups are now the, one of the most targeted, um, one of the, uh, main targets uh, of the supervisory authority, like the CNIL in France. Why? Because in France, for instance, startups, a lot of startups are processing a lot of, of data and are doing a, a business, a digital business. So of course they are, they are targets. Okay. And the GDPR uh, always apply to everyone. Uh, if you are a startup located in, within the EU, you are of course, uh, um, under uh, the GDPR. If you are clients, if you are not, for instance, if you are not located uh, within the EU, but outside the EU, but you are targeted, targeted people which are them inside the EU. Therefore, you have to comply with GDPR and whatever the size is, whatever the turnover is, and so on. And uh, there are some examples of uh, startups that thought they were uh, outside the GDPR compliance and they were they have been convicted and um, i think they are they are almost die now um, for instance you have nestor in france i don't know if uh, the audience uh, know nestor but nestor was a startup which um, was um, working pretty well a few years ago and they were doing uh, marketing automation without any uh, any um, any limits and without uh, complying with gdpr and uh, of course, someone uh, did a claim uh, to the supervisory authority in France. And then of course, they have been prosecuted and convicted and now they still exist, but it's really hard for them because uh, uh, for their reputation, as said uh, uh, David before, it's really important to, to comply with GDPR. And uh, here you have just some example of risk. Of course, 
you can see criminal sentence don't be worried. Uh, it's really rare to be a sentence uh, uh, to, to go to really to go to jail. It's possible, but it's really, really rare. Uh, it's only in a really specific case. Uh, but the, 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 the main risks could be your image, could be a financial, um, and it can from from you and are from coming from your clients, partners, um, and even com even competitors. So it's really really important when you are a startup to be compliant because, for instance, your competitor I've seen it uh, before can use can check as we said before it can go on your website check if you are not compliant, and then uh, doing complain. Uh, to the, the supervisory authority in order to disturb their own um, competitors. Um, and so who are, uh, David, Lidget's clients? Do you have to respect the GDPR rules? Um, yes, we do have to. Um, so first of all, clients nowadays are, I think, 50% almost from the US because that's the nature as we are uh, integrating to the major US um, CRMs like Salesforce and HubSpot. So most of our clients are from the US and then it's like 15% France and then Germany after and then rest of the world. So especially in Europe, especially for, for Germany um, and France, we need to stick to GPR rules. Um, it's a bit less for the US, but um, I can also, from the beginning, really it's uh, from the beginning of our, of our journey as a startup, there's really a danger that you can fall into a trap. What do, what do I mean? I mean, we are a bootstrap business, so we have no money at the beginning for our sales guys to perform sales. So we need to somehow gain our customers in a cheap way. Um, Omar always says in a cheap French way. Um, I don't know what he, he means to with that, but I, lo I know a lot of French companies uh, where we always try to have a methodology where we can acquire customers in a cheap way. So I was new to that. And um, what possibilities do we have then as a, as a young and early startup? Um, of course, and that's why I say trap, there can be the trap of this cheap selling, meaning that you buy um, lead data. You get, I think, every one of us, a lot of emails all the time from various countries um, saying, do you want to, do you want to buy 5,000 leads? for your specific um, business, um, high quality leads, et cetera. So you can fall into that trap and, and buy elite databases and then try to nurture these leads by mass emailing, for instance. And then that's the next trap. So not only that you bought uh, lead data, which is uh, not GDPR friendly, then you're sending even emails, cold emails, which is also not GDPR friendly because they didn't opt in. So uh, that's the second mistake. And also it's not good for a reputation because as a young startup, you can make mistakes not only by doing that, also by um, the, the art of um, kind of a prospecting, meaning that you reach out in a, in a, in a, in a way which is not very uh, well um, researched. So you send one message to 5,000, for instance. Um, of course, then you make maybe a mistake with the placeholder. So these are all things we have not a lot of possibilities, but for us as a startup, the best way of doing was multi-channel marketing, nurturing slowly, really research our customers and the ideal customer profile, and then do the first step on LinkedIn, which kind of is a, is a way in between. LinkedIn is a business network. So if you connect with someone, you have somehow a business interest. And then after you drop the first message, you can then follow up maybe with an emailing. So that's a, an easy step into the door. And um, this then worked for us, um, having longer um, sequences and nurturing, um, but uh, don't fall into the trap of buying lead data from somewhere shady and then um, sending out uh, cold emails uh, without uh, warming them up on another platform or getting in connection, um, especially for Europe. For US, that may work. And actually, I also uh, did that when I was in the US. I, 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 I looked on an uh, event page and on the speaker list. And then I uh, kind of tried myself all the different variations of the first dot last name at company.com. So um, I got a result at the end. And then I pushed a mes message to it was a, back then a, a big um, a CEO of a big uh, billion dollar business. Actually, that worked. And he got back to me and I had a call with him. 
but um, that may work uh, in the US. And uh, yeah, it was back in the study. So I really would suggest to you don't do that in Europe. Yeah. And uh, of course, yeah, Laura, thanks. Uh, if you have any comments and questions, put them in the chat, either if it's for Rafael, for GDPR rules, or either if it's to our journey um, having uh, we had with lead chat so far um, and sticking to the GDPR rules. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that was the, the question. So um, definitely we need to look out uh, for GDPR and stick to that for our customer base. Yeah, thank you, David. Um, so mistake free using a processor which is not GDPR compliant. So David explained uh, a bit before what uh, is a processor. So uh, a processor is someone who is uh, processing your, your personal data on your behalf. So you have a lot of processors. And of course, is legit is a data processor. I know I, um, every, of course, that legit is your processor. And uh, what it means, it means that uh, if you are, uh, it means that, yeah, I begin again, again. To, to be to really understand what it's about, it's, it is about, you need to understand that in GDPR, you have two, two different kinds of factors. You have the data controller and you have the data processor. Uh, the data controller is the one who is um, defining the purpose and the means of a processing. So, for instance, if you are uh, if you are a boss, you have employees. You are the data processor of your employees for all human resources um, uh, uh, purposes, of course, such as uh, uh, paying a bill. Uh, uh, the payroll, paying uh, um, the, 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 I don't know if I'm paying the, the, the ticket of the tra of transport and so on. Um, and if you are using some uh, uh, um, a service advisor, such as uh, uh, such as Lidget, who is using your personal data, is helping you to use your personal data, is a data processor. And what it um, and what does it mean in the GDPR way? It means that you have, you as a data controller, you have obligation. Uh, and one of these, these obligations is to control, to monitor your own data processors. Even if you have 50 processors, you, uh, GDPR doesn't care about this. You need to process all your data processors. And it means that you can do, you can, you need to have um, data protection, ag protection agreement, or you, data processor can have it in your in in their uh, in their uh, own contracts. But you need to have something with um, with managing your relations uh, with your data processor, and you need to to normally you need to 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 do audits. Um, I don't know, maybe each year or two one uh, each two years. Uh, to, to, you need to ask to your processor if he's uh, compliant or not. Because if you are not doing this and there is a problem from your data processor, then it will be your, you, you will be liable. That's why you will have, you will really have to, 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 to check and to verify before recruiting your, your data processor, you have to verify that this data processor is complying. And, that's why we, are, we were saying before uh, with David that uh, it was it is really important even if you as a startup you as a data processor to be compliant because uh, if you want to grow you will need to be compliant um, sometimes because your clients will have will ask you to be compliant um, so this is really really important in in one side in, in in one side if you are data controller you need to check that your processor are compliant. If you are a data processor, you need to be compliant. Um, and uh, so is prospecting through Lidget G is uh, GDPR uh, friendly? Um, yeah, so first of all, product wise, maybe let's start with that. It is, uh, so when, when you when you work with Lidget, um, it's working on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn data profile on LinkedIn, this data is first of all, public available and um, on LinkedIn, as I said before, it's a, it's a platform for recruiting and um, kind of business networking. So if there's a legitimate business interest, it's totally okay to contact them, send a request and, and send them a first message. 
and this is actually also what we advise to do. Um, as I said, the first step into the door, better to do it via LinkedIn and um, check for their interest and then maybe follow up with an with a email. But having a cold email instead and um, having a no, a no opt in before, thanks to an email newsletter or something, is dangerous and um, it's not sticking to the GDPR rules. So that's why we say, okay. Uh, let's do social selling approach together with lead chat on LinkedIn. You can warm up um, the leads and, and prospect them um, through multiple channels later than email. So that's totally fine from, from product wise. And um, also we as a company, as you, as you said um, correctly, Raphael, we are um, a data processor. So what we do, we just transfer the data from what, one platform um, to another without really storing the data. So um, you as a salesperson, as Rafael said as well, um, you are the controller of the data, meaning when you have the phone number, you are in control of the phone number. And it's up to you if you want to call the prospect or not. We as LeadJet uh, can't do that. So that's very important uh, to know. It's nothing else when you just have a pen and paper and you just transfer the information from LinkedIn to your CRM. It's the same what you do with pen and paper. Um, as we are no robot or something that does that for you. So yeah, that's it. We are GDPR friendly. I'm happy to say. <laughs> <laughs> I confirm. <laughs> um, step four, which is really important, we we ask about it a lot uh, uh, many times uh, since the beginning of this uh, webinar. But it's uh, really important to 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 really uh, um, 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 provide you some more details. Not it's important to comply with opt-in rules, of course, uh, because Previously, I, I talked about uh, Nestor. Nestor, the startup who has been convicted by the CNIL, the French Supervisory Authority. They, were been, they have been convicted because they didn't comply with opt-in rules. Okay? And uh, they have something like, uh, they have been convicted, sentenced, sentenced to 20,000 euros, something like that, during the, the, the COVID. It was uh, really hard for them. Um, so what is opt-in first? Of course, maybe you have all uh, heard about it. Is the opt-in is the obligation to 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 gather the prior consent of uh, people before sending them uh, direct marketing emails. Uh, what you need to know is um, in in France, for, that's in France, that's it for sure. But it's quite the same in Europe. Um, you can, you can, the, 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 the specific rule, the opt-in is only working for email and SMS. It's not working for phone and postal mail. That's why you can have in your mailbox uh, many mails uh, with your name that has been sent by someone. Oh, that's why in France, you, you, nobody had no, nobody um, has no, nobody has a, um, a, a phone on. Um, how to say? We don't have a, a home phone now because mm -hmm. everyone is is phoning uh, at your home. Uh, each um, each company wants to 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 provide you with uh, some direct marketing. So that's why uh, in in France, direct marketing is only for email and SMS. So. On the contrary, it means that you can you can uh, send messages. You can you can do a call for a phone call to anyone without uh, uh, checking if um, without having their parent consent. Okay, so this is really important too because now we are mostly sending messages, email, uh, to check that you you can do this. Of course, don't worry. If there is some exception in 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 Europe and in France. Because you have to 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 gather the, the, the opt-in, but only in B2C situation. In B2B situation, you don't have to gather the prior consent. Um, for instance, if um, if David from Lidget was not my client, I could send him a message uh, saying, "Okay, uh, do you have a DPO? Do you need a DPO? Because I'm providing this such a uh, such service." Because it will be, um, uh, of course, interested, uh, interested, uh, not of course by DPO, but by being compliant. Uh, so um, I can send him a message, but because we are in B two B situation, okay. So this is really important. Okay, I just say that. 
Um, and I, okay, I already say that. So, um, and so HolyJet is an um, HolyJet uh, comply with opt-in and opt-out rules. Yeah. So, so first of all, for the opt-in, as we are mainly treating inbound leads, um, we have different opt-ins for. Instance for our uh, email newsletter, uh, we have ebooks we send away. So here we have a landing page to get the ebook where you need to opt in, of course. Um, also for our webinar attendees, uh, you need to opt in um, to send a follow up email or, for instance, a GDPR playbook after. Um, so here we have different opt ins and um, we, we use that uh, inbound channels mainly. Uh, next to that, uh, we also uh, can have an opt out in our email newsletter. Of course, there's an unsubscribe button. Um, and we also have, have opt outs in our messages. Um, this we can also show you later, or you will find it as well in the GDPR playbook. What is an opt out message? Um, for instance, I write at the end um, if you don't want to further receive this content, etc. Um, we won't send you a follow-up message, etc. So this can also be an opt-out message um, inside LinkedIn even. So when you use one of our uh, templates or when you use our template feature and we will give away some, some uh, GDPR templates, then you can have an, an opt-out message template as well. Um, and that's how we do at Pichat at the moment, yeah. Okay, thank you. And of course, uh, the following uh, mistake is not complying with GDPR rules. And uh, uh, this one could be uh, um, uh, could um, appears to be odd, but uh, actually, I receive a lot of uh, of uh, email uh, on my uh, on my own uh, email box uh, as uh, as a DPO and as a CEO of DPO. So I mean, in a B two B situation, but the so they can send me a message. Why not? But they forgot something really important is that you always need to uh, provide the possibility to unsubscribe, to be deleted from the uh, from the, the from the database, of course. And uh, a lot of people are, um, are, um, think that you just need the prior consent. No, you need the opt-in first, and then you need the opt-out. Is it? An, it's an obligation. That means that you you really need in each um, in in messages you need to provide to 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 integrate uh, a message which provides a possibility to unsubscribe to, uh, to to opt out. Okay, and of course it's free of charge, free of charge, and so on. Of course, um, this is, for instance, an example of an email you have to send. You you can think that this is really really uh, really long, but um, we, a really large message. But it's really important to 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 provide all of this information. You need to inform the source of the information, uh, where you 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 give her the information. For instance, uh, LinkedIn, uh, social social networks, and so on. Uh, that and you you need to 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 explain how they can unsubscribe. Okay. For instance, here they can subscribe by sending stop to 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 an email, and you have to provide more information. Um, uh, you need to really to provide all information, but you you can you can integrate an email a, a link, sorry, right here, that will lead to your privacy policy and inform people about the processing you are doing. And so to to summary to summarize, you need to the opt out needs to um, to integrate as a possibility to withdraw the prior consent and needs to to integrate the, the information about the processing so this is our this are um, example of lead jets when they are uh, doing um, um, uh, uh, they are sending message on lead on linkedin because uh, if you are doing prospection uh, marketing um, Email on messages on LinkedIn. You need, you still, you all, you uh, you need um, this kind of message. So opt out. So here you can see that people can unsubscribe. And right here, it's the same for Lidget. Yeah, right here. So this is really, really, really important. And uh, this could be uh, something that people 
uh, do not think. Yeah. Um, and and uh, so for, for yeah. everyone who didn't have the chance to make a screenshot, <laughs> you will get ah, this demo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the worries. Uh, but sorry, I wasn't uh, I was interrupting. Okay. No, no, that's right. You're you're right. <laughs> um, and so, how are you doing the opt out? Because we say we talked about the opt in, uh, David, and now the opt out. Maybe you talk about it uh, before, but if you want to to provide more details. Um, no, I think as we 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 don't use a lot of at the moment uh, kind of outreach messages anymore, um, but these were the templates we used. Uh, because at the moment we are kind of changing a bit our strategy uh, more to APM accounts. And um, now that was basically what we did, we have in messages opt outs. And as I said, um, if we have a reply that someone doesn't want to receive messages anymore from us, we stop um, a sequence, um, for instance, or all that. But as I said, we did that more at the beginning and do it less now, um, only for very high IBM, ABM account based marketing accounts in a very researched way um so yeah that's it and uh, one of the last uh, mistake it's um, the last mistake speaking that complying with cookie rules is enough uh, why it's a mistake because uh, a lot of people are thinking uh, that okay i have a cookie policy uh, i have a cookie banner then i am a uh, I am perfectly compliant and I don't have uh, to do any more uh, things about GDPR. Uh, of course, this is not true. If you have a cookie banner, if you have uh, a cookie privacy, this is this is a good a good thing. Uh, this is this is nice, but it's only maybe 10% of the, of uh, your GDPR compliance. Um, for instance, the the, the the cookies are only. Uh, related to your website, um, but if you want to be compliant, it's only it's not only your website. It's your website. It's your uh, human resources. It's your data client databases. Uh, it's your products and so on and so on. Um, so uh, you have to to um, you really need to 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 understand that uh, being compliant GDPR is not only having a good website, having something, having one thing and having another thing. It's, it's really a, a whole thing. You have a lot of things to do, which is, that's why it could be complicated. And uh, having only uh, a, a cookie, cookie policy or cookie banner is not sufficient. And it's um, it could be really, really bad for you because uh, for to, to have a cookie banner, you need to pay, to pay a tool. Uh, and uh, if you pay a tool each month uh, to not to be compliant, you are paying for nothing actually. So it's uh, it's uh, it's um, really tips. Uh, so if you need the tips, it's uh, either you don't do anything or you do everything. And. Uh, and the last one, the last question is a mistake is thinking that gdpr uh, does not allow to upload personal data in a crm or to use a marketing automation tool uh, why it's a mistake it's a mistake because gdpr doesn't forbidden to you to, to do such things of course if you are using um, a crm or if you are uh, using uh, any tools to 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 to, to do marketing, uh, they, it's, they are not um, uh, against GDPR rules. Uh, and this is really something that people think, okay, I cannot use this, this kind of tool because it's not compliant. No, as we said before, um, they are data processors, they have obligations um, provided by the GDPR, okay? But if they are complying with the GDPR, and if you are complying with your GDPR, you of course can uh, upload uh, information to CRM and so on. And for this, you, 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 um, if you are, for instance, a data, pro a data processor, you need um, to be compliant to do um, different kind of things, such as um, such as uh, the, uh, the privacy by design, for instance. Which is which is privacy by design is to check. Uh, during the development of your products, that you are in a, at 
all steps that you are pro uh, complying with GDPR, for instance, that uh, you are, okay, you, you can um, uh, allow people to unsubscribe, okay, you can, uh, you can help your client to, uh, um, to comply with, uh, uh, with um, the right to be forgotten and so on. And if you are complying with all uh, these conditions, uh, it means that your tool uh, is um, by design compliant, and then it can be uh, it can be a sell, of course, and be used by your clients. And it's the case uh, with 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 uh, with Lidget because um, David, how oh, Lidget design uh, uh, its products to be complying with GDPR rules. Yeah, and and here's again another another trap or a trap uh, for for every startup founder, um, because at the at the beginning, it's always when when you start your company. Of course, you think about okay, how can I grow that company pretty fast, and how can I gain when you're a SaaS business new MRR quickly? How can I get new new monthly recurring revenue? So um, for us, it was very important, and don't fall into this trap of new revenue gains. Um, for making uh, mistakes on uh, the product, which is not GDPR compliant. And for instance, we could have went to the mass automation mark, meaning that we scrap lists um, as a robot, um, that we send messages on, on, a, on a big scale as a mass automation tool. Of course, this uh, can attract a lot of users because it's the more automation, the less things to do for me as a, as a sales. Um, but this can backfire within your business after uh, some months, years, whatever. Because if you don't stick with your product to the GDPR rules, of course, um, you have uh, in the later stage problems. So you may, have, you may have quick revenue gains, but in the later stage, you may have other problems. So that's why for us, it was very important before starting the product, publishing the, launching the product, that we check for each feature that we develop, that we stick to the GDPR rules. Meaning, for instance, we have the add to CRM button on the profile page. We could have it also somewhere else or even before, but um, we try to make our product as um, sufficient to the user, as um, easy to the user that we always follow the user steps and not doing the steps for the user. Meaning uh, you have this add to CRM button when you click on the profile. So we force the user to go to the profile and then get this information. We just eliminate the copy and pasting, what I meant with the pen and paper. You can also look on the screen, write it down, um, and then put it somewhere in the CRM. So that's the same process, just a productivity hack for you um, with lead chat. And, and I think that's so important to understand. Um, and this is for all of our features. Um, we don't develop any feature when it is not sticking to the GDPR rule. That's important for us. Um, don't look for quick uh, MRR uh, gains, uh, look for long-term, that your product and your customers are on the safe side. So that's why we even advise, thanks to your help, Raphael, our customers with a GDPR playbook and different templates. Um, so yeah, that's that's how we how we do with lead chat. And I think the, the things I, I mentioned before with the data processor, another controller, that's also clear, but uh, that would be my biggest, or our, also our biggest learning for, for each startup founder or early stage startup. Yeah. Okay, um, I think it was the last slide, David. Yeah. So yeah, maybe just quick what I was saying. Um, we have a new new feature coming out. It's called the contact update feature. And here we also look before designing the feature into GDPR. Uh, so, of course, a lot of sales problems, they have a problem at the end of the year. Ah, oh, perfect, you hear me again. Um, so, at the end of the year, that they need to update their CRM contact database because people change jobs over the year and uh, now someone is working at Google and not any longer at Facebook. So, um, ah, Rafael, you hear me as well. So, what you do need to do then as a sales, um, you need to go through that list and see for updates, change that in your CRM. So, it's a very manual process and it takes a lot of steps. What we do with LeadJet now is that we notify you about outdated contacts. So in the in the LeadJet product on LinkedIn, we push your notification, say here, Paul is now working at Google and not any longer at Facebook. And then you have a link to his profile. So you do the action and you go to his profile and then you do the action of update. So you are aware that we do that for you. Of course, we could have designed uh, the, the feature 
that we do as a product everything for you so that we have an auto update. We don't ask you, we just keep your database updated. But this wouldn't stick to GDPR rules. And uh, that's what I meant. Before um, you design such a feature, or we design a feature, we really look um, if we're sticking to, to these GDPR rules and um, that each of our users can follow each of our actions as a product as well. I think that's that's most important. And um, yeah, Raphael, I can't see you any anymore. But um, anyway, that was the end, 45 minutes of our uh, little session about GDPRs and mistakes you can um, do, <laughs> you can do, but you shouldn't do as a, as a, as a, as a company, as a startup, especially. Um, so reach out if you have any questions to Raphael um, or me, but uh, in terms of GDPR, Raphael is the expert as we reach out every month to him. Um, he has really a cool service with DPO. So um, you can have a subscription service and um, have him as your DPO and um, yeah, ask him any question uh, you want. And that really helped us since the beginning of the year uh, also to, to gain clients and have all the necessary documentation ready. So thanks a lot, Raphael. Thanks a lot to everyone else for participating. It was a pleasure. And uh, we send you the ebook afterwards with all the templates. And um, yeah, Thank otherwise, you. I would uh, also love if you test the chat, of course. Always a little ad uh, for us as well. Um, and have a good Christmas season, advanced season uh, to you and all your beloved ones. And thanks for that. We have another webinar on Thursday together with Drop Contact. Uh, where we talk also about our cooperation and uh, let's tune in and otherwise I wish you all a good rest of the day. Bye-bye. See you.